Here we have 5.5 solving a rational equation that simplifies to linear denominator ax or ax. So first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this over one and then gotta remember from the previous videos we get the common factors listed once only and then the distinct factors, okay? Um, and so then let's see. I have denominator one, which is one. I have denominator two, which is three. And I have a denominator three, which equals C. Now, if you notice, they don't really have anything in common, but you could put a one here, and now these two have a one in common, okay? What do they have different? There's a three there that isn't in the other denominators, and there's a C there that isn't in the other denominators. Now, careful to pay attention to what I just did. The common factor didn't have, it. I mean, it is, because you can always do three times one, and it's still three. But the common factors don't have to be in common with all three. It could just be that two factors have something in common and that gets listed under the common factors. Or maybe even all three of them have it in common and then of course you would list it under the common factors, okay? So just keep that in mind again as we move forward and the level of difficulty in these denominators increases. So if I multiply all of this common and uncommon and uh, these are the common ones and then the distinct ones we multiply all that together we end up with 3c so i'm going to take every single one of these fractions and multiply it by 3c over 1. And then notice that the way I'm writing it, I'm always writing my LCD to the right, okay? That will be helpful later as to why I'm doing it that way. Um, but for now, I definitely want to build you into the habit of writing your term first and then the LCD over one. Term first, then the LCD over one. Term first, and then the LCD over one. So here there's nothing to cancel. I just end up with 60 after multiplying them. And because they're over one, I don't have to include the denominator. Here though, I do have the factor three that will cancel. So when I multiply, I get four C. And if it's over one, it's just the whole number. Here the C's will cancel. So I get negative five times three, which is negative 15. Again, over one means there's really no denominator there. How do I solve this resulting equation? I will have to minus 4c on both sides. That's gone, I have 2c equal to negative 15. Divide by two, I end up with c equal, this does not reduce, so I get c equals negative 15 over two, okay? Now remember, this is a potential solution, okay? We did everything correctly, this is the response we found, but it's not an actual solution until we decide on whether or not this number will make any of the denominators zero. One is one. Doesn't matter what C is, it's not gonna turn to a zero. Three is three. Doesn't matter what C is, it's not gonna turn to zero. This denominator is C. So when I plug in the value for C, I get negative 15 over two. That's also not zero. So as long as none of the denominators will become a zero with this potential solution, that is when it becomes an actual solution. And you can say this is the solution to the equation. And I have another example over here. So again, this is like over one, right? And then we've got the denominator one is B, denominator two is B, denominator three, is one. You can think of these as 1b if you want to. So what do they have in common? They have the one in common. These two have a b in common. And then there's nothing else extra other than the ones and the b's. So there's no other distinct factors going on here, okay? So if I multiply those together, that's just b. So I'm gonna take 17 over b times b over one equals 29 over b times b over one plus 14 over one times b over one. Here the b's will cancel, here the b's will cancel, nothing will 
cancel there. So all I'm left with 17 over 1, which is just 17. 29 over 1, which is just 29. And 14B over 1, which is just 14B. So then how do I solve this resulting equation? I minus 29 on both sides. I get 14B on the right. And on the left, just to be sure, I get negative 12. And then divide both sides by 14. We end up with that B equals a negative, and 12 over 14 reduces to 6 over 7. So again, this is a potential solution. Let's verify whether or not it's an actual solution. If I plug this value into this denominator, the denominator will not be zero. If I plug this value into this denominator, this denominator will not be zero. And there's nothing to plug into that denominator, but that denominator is also not zero. As long as none of the denominators become zero with this value, this is an actual solution. So I can box it and type in my solution negative six over seven in Alex.